Yeah, man. Um, don't panic. If you see the smoke I come from a pocket, don't panic. It, it, it happens. It's just that my spending habits are burning a hole inside my wallet. But, you know, it happens when you don't budget. But if you want to learn how to prevent this, then stay tuned. No matter your age, the type of job you have, or the amount of money you make, everybody has problems managing their money. Too many times we see people living from paycheck to paycheck. And while we can blame the economy and blame that our job is not paying us enough, most of the times when I observe, it is just due to our lack of knowledge when it comes to managing money. And it's understandable because school systems don't even teach you how to make money, much less handling it. And the only way that we will eventually learn is by having experience and going out there in the world and making a couple mistakes. Well, I don't mean to brag, but it's a good thing that you have guys like me out here on YouTube sharing our experiences, sharing my mistakes. And there's something that I'd like to share with you guys today and it's called a budget. Without further ado, welcome to my channel. My name is Demetrius Fearman, and on this channel, we discuss money. So stay tuned. Budgeting always brings a sad face to people and it always makes them feel down. And I don't know why, because generally, if you have a goal, a budget is the best bulletproof way to accomplish that financial goal. And the reason why it is such a powerful tool is because it tracks your money and shows you what you are actually doing with it. So here are my tips on budgeting. Tip number one is tracking your income. So yeah, that means if you have a job, yes, track that income. That means if somebody owe you some money, track that income. If you do a partner draw and you're gonna receive some money, track it. If you braid here on the weekend, track it. If you fix people TV on the weekend, track it. Everything that is considered an income or money coming into your account, you should be aware of it and you should track it. Tip number two, group all your expenses. So we're gonna start off by separating all our expenses. And if you wanna use a pen or a paper, Excel sheet, if you wanna write it on a piece of cardboard, anything that makes you feel comfortable, get it and write down what leaves your account. When you separate your expenses, you basically get a better visual of what is your spending habit and truthfully it gives you a better visual of what is burning a hole in your <laughs> when you group your expenses you can better see what is necessary and what is a waste of money basically you know and once you know you have the power tip number three is going to be applying the 50 30 20 rule I mean, no people don't like your numbers, but just bear with me. When you apply the 50, 30, and 20 rule, you're basically saying this. You're basically saying that when you get your paycheck, 50% of it is going to cover your needs. 30% I will cover your wants, and 20% I will stash away in your savings and investments. So this is why I said group everything, because now it's going to be easier to separate your needs, your wants, and your savings. So I know it's hard to learn new information without an example, because that's how I learn. So take for example Stacy, and Stacy has a net income of a hundred thousand dollars and listen to this guys we live in the net we don't live in the gross gross are when government take out them tax and expenses and everything what is left is your net you live in the net so simple maths boom bang one two stacy make a hundred thousand dollars and if you take fifty percent of a hundred thousand dollars you have $50,000 and that is going to cover Stacy's needs. And what are considered needs? Well, for example sake, needs are going to be your rent, your water, your light, your food, and in this day and age, your internet. So things that you consider needs are going to be taken care from that 50 percent of your income basically anything you cannot live without anything that will dramatically 
hamper your life. Notice I didn't say lifestyle, but anything that dramatically hampers your life, then that is what is considered a need. Then we look at Stacey's wants. 30% of her salary is $30,000. So Stacey's wants will be clothes because she need clothes for good work. Will be new hairstyle because Stacey wants to feel nice and look good on the Monday morning when she turn up for office. You know, Stacey wants to eat out with her friends. Stacey just wants to buy maybe some fierce products to feel her best. Stacey might love going to the gym and the gym is her hobby. So those are the things that Stacey will hold under that 30% bracket which she calls her wants. And finally, we have Stacey's 20% bracket. And this is going to be called her investment slash savings bracket. And she will be left with $20,000. So it is dependent on Stacey you now how she wants to separate that $20,000. Whether she wants to say 5,000 for investments and 15,000 for savings or she just wants to split it straight down the middle and say 10 savings, 10 investments. But what she needs to focus on with that savings bracket is having an emergency fund and having an investment fund. An emergency fund tying to the story like this. I'm going to give you my personal experience with having an emergency fund. So I had some serious, serious pain in one of my teeth them. And people usually see me there work, cool up in a one corner and squeeze up in a one little ball and sometimes yo, I water run out of that one eye for how the pain did hot. So now me now take up my health insurance card now, carry it to the dentist. Lo and behold, my health people them say yo, them can't cover hit such a big bill because my first time me not get the logic behind it but them said them couldn't cover it and it was a root canal and anybody will know how root canal expensive up in the hundred thousands right if me never have my money put on in our emergency fund what if you just grab a pliers brother uh, and cramp the teeth with some ice and just pull it out <laughs> so that is why it is good to have an emergency fund because you never know when something can happen you care what you think that sturdy and you go to work every day you tire them four of them bus one time what you gonna do you care need some mechanical care what you gonna do you're sick and you need to go to the hospital you need to go to the doctor what you gonna do and so comes the emergency fund coming to play and the worst case scenario for most of we you go to work one morning and they say you know mr fearman um don't come in today you know so that emergency fund that you buffer money for bring your true life. As them say emergency. Buying grocery, I know what emergency. Going to party, I know what emergency. Buying one piece of cake, I know emergency. Buying a new posh iPhone 12 or 30 anyway they want there is not an emergency. Emergency are basically almost the same thing like a need, except it depends on a higher priority. Emergencies don't happen often. But when they do, they are big. So have an emergency fund. So let me jump to the investments because that is what I love. Investment is basically hedging your money against your savings. Because we all know we don't get no major return on our savings account. So if you want to outpace inflation and make your money do work for you even when you are asleep, then an investment account is the best way to go. It may sound like common sense and it may sound like something that a video is not supposed to be made about but trust me, until you start to write down and take a note of your spending habits, you won't even see a change and trust me, you're gonna be surprised when you actually see where you are putting your money and the things that you are spending your hard earned cash on. So to effectively manage your money and accomplish your financial goals, I personally think a budget is the way to go and everybody should implement a budget into their lifestyle. Anyways guys, thank you for watching this video. This has been Demetrius Fearman and until next week, happy investing.